Welcome to Hoostai National Park 2022. This unique wildlife refuge is located only a two hours drive away from the Mongolian capital city of Ulaanbaatar and it is especially famous for being home to one of the few wild populations of Shabalsky's horse, known in Mongolian as the Taki. Prior to their reintroduction, wild examples of Shabalsky's horses were last seen in Mongolia in the late 1960s. However, in 1992, when Hustai National Park was established, this species began being reintroduced there. Most of these came from European zoo collections. That the reintroduction of Taki to Hustai National Park has been a great success is evidenced by the fact that there are now more than 400 of these wild horses living in Hustai National Park. This represents an approximately five-fold increase over the originally 84 reintroduced individuals. As of 2022, some 40 gray wolves have been documented living in Hustai National Park. 12 of these are juveniles. The gray wolf, of course, is a predator and, unsurprisingly, it sometimes preys upon Shavalsky's horse, the Taki. Ogana Gonbold, who is the chief wildlife protection ranger in Hustai National Park and who served as our wildlife guide while we were there for about three weeks, informed us that two Chevalsky's horse foals had been killed by wolves during our stay. The gray wolf is the largest predator of Hustai National Park and, in comparison to other areas of Mongolia, its population is rather high in the park as well. The male seen here was accompanied by a female. And here we see a mother red deer and her calf running quickly to keep away from the wolves. We observed this alpha male wolf and another wolf hunting red deer. They were chasing them up the side of this mountain. The red deer herd had already gone over the crest of the mountain.
Notably, the mean body mass of the gray wolf is about 40 kilograms or 88 pounds. The smallest specimen ever recorded was about 12 kilograms, 26 pounds, and the largest came in at 79.4 kilograms or 175 pounds. <laughs> The red fox is the largest of the true foxes and one of the most widely distributed members of the order Carnivora, being present across the entire northern hemisphere, including most of North America, Europe, and Asia, plus even parts of North Africa. Red foxes are omnivores with a highly varied diet. They primarily feed upon small rodents such as voles, mice, ground squirrels, hamsters, gerbils, woodchucks, pocket gophers, and deer mice. Here we see a red fox being shadowed by a magpie, which is probably trying to get some fox fur with which to line its nest. Indeed, the late spring and early winter are a time when many mammals of Husta National Park shed their winter coat. And the magpie seems keenly aware of this fact. In general, red foxes are quite a bit more common in Husta National Park than gray wolves. And here we see a pair of little owls. We observed five individuals of this species at a herdsman's camp in or near the buffer zone of Hustai National Park. Like many other owl species, little owls preen with their talons as well as their beaks. Because an owl can't print its own head with its beak, it uses its talons to groom this area, or it may solicit help from another owl. The little owl usually perches in an elevated position and is ready to swoop down on any small creature it notices. It feeds on prey such as insects and earthworms, as well as small vertebrates including amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Among mammals, the Mongolian gazelle, or white-tailed gazelle, is the true speedster of Hustai National Park. It is one of the most numerous large animals in the world, with the total population being around 1.5 million individuals, but roughly 100,000 of these are killed each year. And here we can see the horns, which are characteristic of the adult males. It is curious that in the early 1990s when Hustai National Park was founded that there were no Mongolian gazelles in the park at that time. However, in the mid-1990s, a huge number of Mongolian gazelles migrated through Hustai National Park to the north. Several of them stayed, and these individuals, along with new migrants, have increased the population to well over 500 individuals.
This sprightly female is characteristically very alert and ready to bolt at the nearest sign of danger, such as the appearance of a gray wolf. Despite being just a few weeks old, this juvenile male Mongolian gazelle is very energetic and quite capable of eluding predators. That is to say, most predators in most situations. And as we can see here, the Mongolian gazelle is also capable of carrying on in a very relaxed manner, especially when it doesn't feel threatened. The Mongolian lark is a species of lark in the family Alaudidae. It occurs from southern Russia and Mongolia to central China. The Siberian marmot is a social colonial living rodent that ranges widely throughout northern Asia. In Mongolia, this species has declined substantially in recent years due to overharvesting for fur, meat, and body parts which are used locally and traded illegally in international markets. The decline of the Siberian marmot is of importance because it is often considered a keystone species, that is, one that exerts effects on its ecosystem that are unique and disproportionately large relative to its abundance. For example, because the Siberian marmot is a major food source for the gray wolf. A decrease in the Siberian marmot population within Hustai Park could mean increased wolf predation on Pshavalsky's horse foals. But for now, Siberian marmot populations within Hustai Park are rather high compared to other parts of Mongolia. In fact, our guide Ranger Ogna Gonbold explained to us that within the past three to five years, he has relocated some 2,500 Siberian marmots from Hustai National Park to other areas of Mongolia where this species has become considerably depleted. The hope, of course, is to reestablish viable populations of this species throughout Mongolia. Here we see a quote-unquote albino Siberian marmot. Now this isn't a true albino, it doesn't have red eyes, but it is a considerably lighter color morph of this particular species. And Ranger Ogana knew where one of these was denning, so we simply set up our camera traps there and obtained the footage that you see now. Another aspect of the Siberian marmot that contributes to its being a keystone species is the fact that it makes burrows, very extensive burrows. When the Siberian marmot abandons these burrows, other species can then take over these abodes. They provide critical habitat, for example, for gray wolf, red fox, corsic fox, palaces cat or manul, hedgehog, and a number of rodent species. The long-tailed ground squirrel lives in colonies with a labyrinth of burrows. The underground passages of these burrows can extend up to 15 meters or 49 feet. Note that the long-tailed ground squirrel seen here appears to be using the same denning area as the Siberian marmot that we just saw.
The lesser kestrel is a small bird of prey, about 27 to 33 centimeters in length, that's about 11 to 13 inches, with a 63 to 72 centimeter or 25 to 28 inch wingspan. It looks very much like the larger common kestrel, but has proportionately shorter wings and tail. Here we see adult lesser kestrels bringing just captured food items to a nest located within this rocky area here. If one looks carefully here, one can see that the adults are bringing lizards and insects to feed to the chicks. As can be seen here, lesser kestrels nest colonially, such as on buildings, cliffs, or in tree holes. They lay from three to six eggs. No nest structure is built, and this is typical for falcons. Seen here is a male lesser kestrel, which has a gray head and tail like the common kestrel male has. This is a female lesser kestrel. And now we will see pelis cats, also known as manuls. We'll be observing a mother and her four kittens. The Pelis cat, Pelis's cat, or Manul, is a small wild cat with long and dense light gray fur. Its rounded ears are set low on the sides of the head. Its head and body length ranges from 46 to 65 centimeters, that's 18 to 26 inches, with a 21 to 31 centimeter long bushy tail, that's 8.3 to 12.2 inches. Ranger Ogana explained to us that in 2020 and 2021, the Pelis cat was relatively more prevalent in Hustai National Park. He further explained that higher than usual rainfall in the spring of 2022 had drowned a lot of the rodent species in the park, such as Brant's vole, in their burrow. Consequently, although Ranger Ogana had seen two Pelis cats in Houston National Park in 2022 in the spring, by the time we got there in late June, we couldn't find any of them. Indeed, Pelis cat populations tend to wax and wane in direct proportion to rodent abundance. So we took the liberty of taking the Pelis cat footage that we obtained in the Eastern Mongolian steppe and showing it as being representative of how Pelis cats occur in some years in Hustai National Park. The Pelis cat is a highly specialized predator of small mammals, which it catches by stalking or ambushing near exits of burrows. 
It also pulls out rodents with its paws from shallow burrows. In the Altai Mountains, remains of long-tailed ground squirrel, flat-skulled shrew, Pelis's pica, and bird feathers were found near breeding burrows of Pelis's cats. <laughs> The Tolai hare is a species of hare native to Central Asia, Mongolia, and northern and central China. It inhabits semi-desert, steppes, rocky habitats, and forest meadows. Due to its rapid reproductive rate, the Tolai hare is relatively common, even in areas with heavy human disturbance. Gray wolves, red foxes, corsic foxes, palace cats, and birds of prey all feed on this species of hare. The steppe eagle is a large bird of prey. It is the only eagle species to primarily nest on the ground. It is very commonly seen throughout Mongolia and is also very common, of course, in Hustai National Park. The upland buzzard is another commonly seen bird of prey in Hustai National Park. Here we see a juvenile on a nest. It has not yet fledged. And yet another common bird of prey seen in Hustai National Park is the black kite. And this poor fellow is getting attacked by a pair of Amur falcons, who clearly are of the view that this black kite is invading their territory. The golden eagle, seen here on the left, is the largest eagle of Mongolia. This individual is eating something it has either scavenged or caught itself. And there's a steppe eagle right beside it trying to cash in on the meal as well. And look at the magpie here behind them. In fact, there's two magpies. And this golden eagle isn't going to tolerate the steppe eagle too much longer. And another golden eagle has flown in and seemingly chased off the first golden eagle. And the step eagle has been dismissed as well. As fast as a juvenile Mongolian gazelle can run, 
this particular individual could not run fast enough to elude the golden eagles that killed it. The Dorian partridge is a game bird in the pheasant family. Its name derives from the Dorian region of Russia, which forms part of their distribution. As it is elsewhere with this species, the Dorian partridges of Hustai National Park generally breed on open grassland. Females usually lay about 13 to 20 olive brown eggs around the second to third week of May. Although the Dorian partridge is a seed-eating species, the chicks in particular consume insects as an essential protein supply. The Amur falcon is a small raptor of the falcon family. It breeds in southeastern Siberia and northern China as well as northern Mongolia before migrating in large flocks across India and over the Arabian Sea to winter in southern and East Africa. As was the case when we visited Hustai National Park in the summer of 2017, in 2022 we also saw many of these katydids. They were really quite abundant and they're an important nutrient source for quite a number of species. For example, we saw these being preyed upon by little owls inside the park. And we also saw them being preyed upon by lesser kestrels. The northern wheat ear is a small passerine bird that was formerly classed as a member of the thrush family, Turdidae, but it is now more generally considered to be an old world flycatcher and in the family Muscicapidae. This is a rather commonly seen bird species in Hustai National Park. In the past, the wild sheep known as Argali only passed through Hustai National Park during the spring and autumn migrations. In 2003, several of them remained in Hustai National Park and now form a permanent population with a population of over 50 individuals, which was recorded in 2015. The name Argali is Mongolian for wild sheep. Indeed, this is the largest species of wild sheep in the world. Argalis live in herds typically numbering between 2 and 150 individuals. They are segregated by sex except during breeding season. The very large horns on these individuals indicate that this is a bachelor herd, a group of males. Argali reach breeding maturity at two to three years of age. Rutting may occur from October to mid-January, generally lasting longer in lower elevations. In rutting herds, both rams and ewes attack others of their own sex exerting dominance by ramming each other with their horns. Although such groups engage in lamb-like play, 
the combat of a pair of mature males is a serious business. The rams slam into each other with their long forelegs up in the air, exerting enough force to be heard from almost half a mile away. It's about one kilometer. Here we see a group of females and young. They're being led by a dominant female. Now, Ranger Ogana, trying to anticipate where this group of Argali would go, placed us in the shadows of a house-sized rock formation. And unbeknownst to this female, she is approaching us and getting very, very close. This is something our Gali tend to not do in Hustai National Park because they're usually afraid of humans. She is just about to realize her mistake. Now she sees us. And there she goes. But, as is the case with all wildlife that we observe, the only shots taken at these Argali were with cameras. So no harm done. An adult Argali male passes the lesser kestrel nesting site we saw earlier. The red deer is one of the largest deer species. Only the stags, which are the individuals seen here, have antlers, which start growing in the spring and are shed each year, usually at the end of winter. Notice how pairs of these stags will challenge one another by standing up on their hind legs and facing off. This no doubt helps the males to keep their sparring skills honed in anticipation of the upcoming yearly rut. Red deer, which had a Hustai National Park population of only 50 in 1992, now number more than 1,300 here. Until recently, biologists considered the red deer and elk, or wapiti, Cervus canadensis, the same species forming a continuous distribution throughout temperate Eurasia and North America. This assertion, however, was based largely on the fully fertile hybrids that can be produced under captive conditions. More recent genetic evidence clearly shows that the wapiti and red deer form two separate species. Female red deer, such as these three individuals seen here, reach sexual maturity at two years of age. Seen in the buffer zone of the park one morning was this pair of demoiselle cranes and their two chicks.
These cranes are migratory birds. Those individuals from western Eurasia will spend the winter in Africa, while the birds from Asia, Mongolia, and China will spend the winter in the Indian subcontinent. The hoopoo was very abundant in Hustai National Park in 2022. This highly distinctive species inhabits a wide range of environments, such as heathland, wooded steppes, savannas and grasslands, as well as forest glades. And here we see a juvenile golden eagle flexing its wings and thereby building up its flight muscles in anticipation of leaving the nest for the first time. The Corsic fox, a medium-sized fox, is a nocturnal and nomadic hunter of the steppes. It does not have a defended territory and, unlike some foxes, sometimes forms packs. Diurnal activity is more common at times when kits need to be fed and when food is scarce, as during the winter. Corsic foxes are rather commonly seen in Hustai National Park. It's certainly enjoyable watching the antics of these two foxes. The Corsic fox is an opportunistic forager and hunter. Its diet varies throughout its range, but consists foremost of small and medium-sized vertebrates, insects, and small rodents, such as voles, gerbils, gerboas, hamsters, and ground squirrels. It also feeds opportunistically on larger prey, including hares and pikas. This individual is feeding on the skin side of a hide from a larger animal. And here are two step eagle chicks waiting for mom to return, hopefully with some food. Ah, here she is. She's brought a small toli hair. She holds that in her talons. So as not to frighten the step eagle chicks or mother, both Paulette and I had each our own 
tent hide from which to observe them. And while Paulette was in hers, she was visited by this Mongolian viper, which is a venomous snake. After waiting about 15 minutes, Paulette managed to get out of her tent hide without getting bitten by the snake. We were, of course, very happy with that outcome, and we believe the snake concurred with our perspective. Watch as these two step eagle chicks observe a butterfly. The one on the right tries to bite it at the end of this video sequence. Among all owl species in the world, the Eurasian eagle owl is second in size only to Blackiston's fish owl. This is another species that we did not see in Hustai National Park, but it is known to occur there. So we include this footage obtained in the Eastern Mongolian steppe as representative of how more or less the Eurasian eagle owl would look if we did see it in Hustai National Park. Female Eurasian eagle owls, which grow a bit bigger than the males, can reach a total body length of 75 centimeters, or 30 inches, with a wingspan of 188 centimeters, or 6 feet 2 inches. Again, the males are slightly smaller, Essentially, Eurasian eagle owls have been found living in almost every climatic and environmental condition on the Eurasian continent, excluding the greatest extremities. They are often found in the largest numbers in areas where cliffs and ravines are surrounded by a scattering of trees and bushes. Note that the two Eurasian eagle owls that we have just seen here were likely a mated pair. And here we see the fledged 2022 offspring of that pair of Eurasian eagle owls. Notably, Eurasian eagle owl nestlings grow very quickly, and this means that the parents must work hard to keep them fed and well nourished. In just a short seven weeks after hatching, or less, the young reach nearly adult size and are ready to fly. The three individuals seen here are making short practice flights as they gain strength, agility, and confidence. They will remain in their parents' territory for another three to four months before leaving home and looking for a territory of their own. And now let's just enjoy some of the playfulness exhibited by some red foxes that were active at night in Hustai National Park. Such play helps these red foxes to develop the agility skills they will need for future hunting and for future interactions with other foxes and other wildlife.
And we were fortunate to have an encounter with one of our favorite Mongolian species, the marbled polecat. This is a mustelid, and like other mustelids, it can emit a strong smelling secretion from the anal sex under the tail when it feels threatened. A predator, marbled polecats are known to eat ground squirrels, Libyan jeards, Armenian hamsters, voles, Palestine mole rats, house mice, and small hares, birds, lizards, fish, frogs, and snails, and insects. Gerboas are hopping desert rodents found throughout North Africa and Asia. The Siberian gerboa is the one found in Hustai National Park. It is an important source of food for palace cats, corsic foxes, red foxes, and birds of prey in Hustai Park. And here we see a corsic fox that has caught either a brant's vole or a gerboa and is seemingly playing with it, perhaps trying to kill it before it eats it. 